It's called Remembering the Game for New York. And what it is tremendous. Is, it's Mark DeRosa and five other former players who are from the New York area and who were playing in the September 21st, 2001 game, the Mike Piazza home run game, the first pro when sporting return, yeah. the, the first pro sporting event in New York of any kind after 9-11. It airs tonight at 10 o'clock on MLB Network, and then it will re-air on Saturday at 1.30 and at 5.30. And Mark DeRosa, of course, spent 16 years in Major League Baseball. He's from Carlstad, New Jersey, Bergen Catholic High School. He needs no introduction. We'll give him one anyway. Mark, this is really like you kind of spearheading this um, this feature, and it, it's really amazing. What was it like from your perspective to talk to these other New York area guys, and you guys are all connected by playing in that very memorable game? Yeah, uh, well, first off, thanks for having me. Um, I listen. I was telling you, I listen to you guys. You are right in my pocket when I get off work driving around. So Love I'm it. Listening to Thank you. The Mizzle. Odyssey app. You can download it. Yep. <laughs> I think for me, I was humbled at first when the features department kind of came to me and said, hey, we're, we're kind of throwing this idea around about 9-11 and wanting to get a feel for all the guys from the surrounding area that played in the game. And I said, I'm telling you, if we just stick a camera in a room and and, and put us just kind of all sitting at a round table, we'll 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 get some good stuff and then kind of build off that. But you guys know your idea of what they're going to the features departments and what these how creative they are and what they put together. I mean, when I was able to see the rough cut of it, I was, you know, just blown away to be a part of it. But it was it was one of those those games maggie where you ask 15 different players on either team should we should we have been there i think you would have got 15 different answers and we didn't know what was right we didn't know what was wrong um but when mike piazza hit that home run it, i i've said this it's the only game i ever played in where i was like from pitch one i wanted jason marquis to do well because he's my boy and he's from staten island but I felt like we had to lose that game. And and when he hit that homer, my, I looked at Bobby Cox real quick because I wanted that reaction because normally he would start throwing. I mean, stuff would get chucked in the dugout. And he was like, yeah, everybody in the dugout was like, this needs to happen. And for that one small moment, it felt like people forgot for a, for a second about what was happening. Mm -hmm. You know, the the memorable Piazza home run off of Carse is the thing that obviously people talk about most about that night, Mark. But where, if you take yourself back 20 years, um, and the documentary, the piece is great, um, and everybody uh, should be tuned in tonight or check it out tonight or over the weekend on MLB Network. When If you take us back 20 years to that night, what what do you remember most? What hits you about that night? Yeah, the, the pregame stuff, Moose. Um, first off, the trepidation from a lot of guys like on the bus going to the yard. It was the first time. Uh, should we be playing? Is it safe to be playing? Um, how is this going to go down? What kind of game is it going to be? But I just remember all the first responders and they rolled it out in such a grandiose way. You felt like you wanted to enjoy it, but at the same time, how could you, you couldn't, I thought I had no knowledge of the fact that we were going to meet and shake hands. I remember Joe McEwing being the guy that I kind of was walking towards and super Joe was, was awesome. And, and a utility player like myself. So I felt like I was a little kindred spirit right there. So that was totally organic. Come to find out Bobby Valentine and Bobby Cox had kind of orchestrated that. So I remember all the all the pregame lead up. I remember the national anthem. I remember locking eyes with my parents in the family section. And you know, I mean, my I didn't my dad wasn't a crier. Uh, but that 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 got everybody in that in that place. I mean, there wasn't a dry eye in the house and just kind of unbelievable. It's see it all in Shea Stadium take place. We all remember that night, and, and it's you speaking with Al Leiter, obviously, Jersey, John Franco, Brooklyn, Steve Carse, Queens, Jason Marquis, Staten Island, Dave Martinez, Brooklyn, Long Island, maybe a little Manhattan in there. You know, Mark, you know your 
personal experience and what you remember. What about the guys you talk to? Because you're kind of helping navigate and kind of starting the conversation in this documentary. What surprised you or stood out from the other players who are from the New York area who experienced that game? Yeah, just the different ways families raise their kids. I, I, I mean, I grew up in Colstadt, New Jersey. Uh, the city was big and bad to my parents. We didn't go in much. I mean, maybe Broadway show once, if I can remember, maybe dinner once. Uh, we didn't really trek through the Lincoln Tunnel until I made it to the big league. So for me, the Twin Towers were always just a backdrop of my wiffle ball games and my Nerf football games, uh, um, you know, on the streets. Uh, for Jason Marquis, completely different growing up in Staten Island. His parents wanted him cultured and liked going into the city constantly. So he had a, a, a real connection with with New York City. Obviously, I thought John Franco was right man, right time for the Mets. Right. Brooklyn through and through. Um, a legend. St. John's everything. So. Everybody had their little Steve Carse blew me away as well. Um, we went back to where he actually grew up, his his childhood home in, in College Point in the Queens and in, in Queens. And you see it and it's like, man, to think like from that window in this tough town to first round pick to the big leagues to being on the mound that night. And he talked about being able to hear. Shea Stadium during the 86 World Series from from just outside his his front steps. So everybody kind of came at it from a different angle. But the, the toughness of, of what New York represents and the tri-state area was uh, is the same for all of us. Mark, what did what did Bobby Cox tell you guys before the game? He didn't say he he didn't say much. He didn't have many meetings, to be honest with you, Moose. Um no one knew how to act. So we just treated it like a normal game. I, I, I think that was the way he wanted it, it, it to be handled. Um, like I said, I pinch ran the eighth. That was kind of par for the course. Maybe a pinch run, maybe a pinch hit, whatever, coming up through the game. Um, I just think for me, the biggest thing was all the karma moments and all the, the, the random moments. And that's why this doc kind of came together for, for Carse and for Johnny Franco and for Jason Marquis and all those guys to be in those moments, especially, especially Jason. Yeah. I mean, the break built on, uh, you know, Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz always had a four that was decent, whether it be a Denny Nagel, a Kevin Millwood, who were, who was really good. And then they'd infuse this one young guy and see if he could cut his teeth. And it just happens to fall on a kid from Staten Island that moment. And for him to go out and dominate, I thought was, I know how much it meant to him to kind of honor New York in, in, in that moment. You know, but my- I don't remember Bobby saying anything like anything crazy going into the game. You know, Mark, you mentioned that, you know, Piazza hits that home run off Carse. Your first, you know, look is toward your manager, Bobby Cox, to see his reaction, right? I'm curious, watching him round the bases after that, what are you thinking on the bench as a, as a Braves player? That's the way it's supposed to be. That's what I was thinking. That's the way it's supposed to be. And on for... All the years I was with the Atlanta Braves, parts of seven seasons, when you lost a ball game, when you were on the road, that ride back to the hotel, there was no talking. You were to honor the guy who gave up runs, whoever made a big error, just own it. You weren't on the phones, nothing. Boom. Quiet until we got back to the lobby. That night, it was guys having conversations about how great that was, that that took place. So I, I thought it's the one game I ever competed in whether, you know, at the big league level or on the street corner that I didn't want to win. And uh, that's still true to to this day. And fast forward, one of the coolest games, and I hate to say this, but a couple weeks later, the Metsies were coming, and Brian Jordan down in Turner Field took John Franco walk-off granny or walk-off three-run bomb, if I'm not mistaken, to kind of ice them out then knock them out. So I remember it like, all right, we're going to let – this moment belongs to the Mets. There's still time to to bury them at some point at the end of the year.
Yeah, that that did not make it into the doc. Um, that, <laughs> that anecdote did, did not make it in. No. Mark DeRosa is joining us, remembering the game for New York airs on MLB Network tonight. And again, it's Mark and five other players from the New York area who were there on the Mets or on the Braves in that game, September 21st, 2001. So, Mark, 20 years later now, you get together with all of these New York area guys. What did it mean to all of you to look back 20 years later and think you were a small part of what became, you know, the beginning of the healing for the city. Yeah. I think Maggie, like you, uh, when you see the footage as they're putting the doc together, I, I mean, I always kind of watch all the documentaries on A and E and kind of follow it throughout the, you know, I've been to the freedom tower multiple times. Um, it's, it's, it was personal. Al Leiter says it in the piece for the guys that grew up around here. We always felt like the twin towers were just this shining light of power. And, uh, you know, you know how we feel about New York city. We're the yeah. biggest bad going. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was just, it was personal. I say this story a lot and people, people are like, you gotta be kidding me. It was like 2011, 2012 ish. Um, I'm playing with the San Francisco Giants and me and Jason Marquis, he was with the Nats at the time and we're having dinner in, in Washington, D.C. And we're dry. He's driving me back to the team hotel. And I, I, I promise you this happened. I said, I said, you know, it's funny, Jay, you were in D.C. You see all the monuments. I still want to know that we're looking for bin Laden. Like, I need to know that because we hadn't heard anything. We get back to the hotel that night breaking news Osama bin Laden's been killed bah, oh. bah, bah, bah. like wow this is like crazy stuff so uh, for me I always felt like it was personal I never wanted it to be forgotten wherever I went uh the remainder of my career I made it a point to go up to the guys and ask them if they wouldn't mind being out on the line for the, the national anthem on 9-11 I felt like I felt like those people deserve that they at least deserve that mm -hmm. Mm. Mark, um, as you sit down with, with all of these guys and you get their perspectives, um, we got your perspective. That is there anything that, you know, the greatest thing of any of well, Lighter, Marquis, you know, Franco, uh, Dave Martinez, um, is there anything that, you know, the biggest thing that you took away from all of it? That's, that's a good question. Just the pride we have for growing up in this part. Without question, I think that the thing I took away probably the most was John Franco, because he was kind of in the fight. Not only he had to try and help that team win a division title growing up in from the area, kids in school in the area, figuring that all out. And in the meantime, City Field, uh, well, I say City Field, Shea Stadium became almost like a triage staging area yeah. mm -hmm. during recovery. So he he was going from workouts to meeting wit widowers and, 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 and trying to get supplies and helping out. Like, so he was carrying on wearing so many hats during that during that time and couldn't have the Mets couldn't have been blessed with a more perfect human being to be in that moment for them absolutely mark listen thank you so much for the time today can't tell you how much we you know say enjoyed the documentary it was so interesting to hear you guys talking about it all these years later and that new york connection and the baseball connection that you all had it really is worth your time it's called remembering the game for new york again airs tonight at 10 on mlb network they're going to re-air it saturday at 1 30 and at 5 30 thank you so much 